Here we have patient presented with a headache, giddiness, blurring of vision in both eyes since yesterday. Now what can lead to blurry of blurring of vision? It could be because of eye or it could be because of brain. Uh, you know, obviously you know I'm talking going to talk about brain. So look at that. In diffusion weighted imaging, the first thing you see is a bright signal and there are some areas of hypo signal but you're not really worried about that you're going to call it acute infarct in the left PCA territory and look at the posterior side of the cerebellum posterior aspect of cerebellum that also gets supplied by the PCA as well so is the medial side of the temporal lobe and that's a PCA infarct if you see closely, you can see a small embolic infarct on the right side, possibly because of a small emboli getting lodged there. Now, because that's a hypo, we will directly go for SWI image, which is another important image to look at. And you see there is a hemorrhagic transformation of the stroke, and that is why it was hypo, relatively. And let us look at T2 weighted images. Again, you can see it's predominantly hyper, but areas of hyper intensities are there. And on T1 weighted images, again, it will be hyper intense. And on coronal images, you can see uh, affected PCA territory. There is kind of a mass effect, but that's not really big. It's kind of just uh, pinching the lateral ventricle there. And to finally, to see ADC, to note whether it is a true or uh, diffusion restriction or not, uh, I wanted to point out in this case, because of the hemorrhage, ADC values can go haywire. So don't really rely on that, but uh, subjective feeling. And also, in this case, uh, there is a blindness loss of blurriness of vision sorry not blindness in the both eyes that really points us towards the same thing now why in both eyes because the cortex doesn't really supply to one eye <laughs> it really has connection to both eyes. this diagram actually explains it how comes left side of the cortex can actually take a representation from the both eyes so left side of occipital cortex has a rep representation from either of the left retina responsible for the corresponding visual fields causing hemianospia however there will be sparing of macular vision because of uh, that u-turn of the fibers what's that called actually I th I think I have forgotten the name of that. The oh my God! I really have forgotten the name of that curve. Hang on. I guess it will be on the optical pathway. If uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's gone. What? Mm. Optic track. If I just search optic track, what do I get? Optic track. Uh. Optic track loop. Mayor slope? No, I'm not talking about mayor slope. There is another. Yeah, this, 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 this is definitely not mayor slope. I don't think it's called something. Hmm. Anyway, so the point if it is right parietal lobe is cut off completely there will be 
homonus hemianopia whole of that will be lost visual field that is seriously it is not mere slope that loop supposed to be called something <laughs> still i don't know so anyway macular vision will be spared there will be a contralateral hemi homonopias hemianopia if the left side will gone will go then the right side vision will be lost contralateral got it that is easy cool i'm sorry i will try to find the name of the loop maybe that doesn't that's not called anything i'm pretty sure there is a name for that other than mayer slope hmm so this was the name i was forgetting it's called wilbrand knee when the nerve fiber from the optic nerve crosses optic chiasma and it should go like this right but no it it goes like a car which has missed the direction mostly likely me go back and then remember huh i'm not supposed to go on another eye i supposed to go forward and then you take a turn and then go back so it's similar to that that's why when there is something which goes cut here it will cause a problem not only the streams of this eye but also of the other eye so that's what it is important why it is it happened like this i don't know maybe if there is a lesion here hypothetically it can spare uh, you know this tract which can go still by crossing like this so maybe that's the evolutionary basis of it somehow to save from pituitary gland tumor or something like that i don't know uh, it's not seen in monkey brains by the way that's the difference between monkey optic eyes and human optic eyes and that's just something i just wanted to share with you and let's continue with our journey so that's a will brand name so we saw the mayor loop and then will brand name two interesting loops when you're talking about optic pathway and so on <laughs>